one commits any of these nullifiers as Islam becomes invalidated. Here, we may turn that down a little bit so I can read. Becomes invalidated if he were to commit one of the nullifiers of ritual purity, such as passing gas, urinating, or death. What? What's that? Passing gas. So how, what was it? What? Oh, a piece of the box. You're going to spill stuff. You're not even being careful. Stop. This goes the same for his Tawheed and his Islam. If he does any of the things that nullify it, his Tawheed and Islam become nullified. Whoever denies the obligation of prayer commits disbelief, and whoever denies the prohibition... Don't don't let the cat out there. Close the door. Close it and keep the cat in here and close the door. How difficult is that? Why do you keep staring at me? Same goes for his Tawheed and his Islam. Oh, let's get the kitty. Hey, everything's purple. Hey, what are you doing? He does any of the things that nullify his Tawheed and his Islam become nullified. Whoever denies the obligation of prayer commits disbelief. Whoever denies the prohibition of fornication commits disbelief. Whoever seeks help from the deceased I'm hungry. and makes his oaths to them commits disbelief, and so on. Dad, I'm hungry. Then go eat some food. There's a banana in there and there's cheese crackers. Watch out for the kitten when you're doing it. Some things that religion has clarified is so that you should learn these rules and have mentioned in the book of Allah. If you study them and seriously reflect upon them, the matter will become clearer to you. The first rule. You must know that the disbelievers whom was the messenger of Allah fought against agreed that Allah was the creator and the administrator, but this belief did not cause them to enter into the fold of Islam. The proof for this is Allah's saying, Say, who provides you for the sky and the earth, or who owns the hearing and the sight, and who brings out the living from the dead and brings out the dead from the living? And who administers the affairs, they will surely say, Allah, say, will you not be dutiful to him, Sir Yunus? First rule states that the polytheists whom the messenger of Allah and his companions fought against affirmed the oneness of Allah in his lordship, Tahid Ur Rubuia. Let's get this kitty out of the way so she won't get an owie. <laughs> If I don't get an alley. Tawheed or Rubuia, they acknowledged that Allah was their creator, sustainer, and administrator of their affairs. They did not doubt this. Today, some ignorant Muslims also think that this is this definition of Tawheed suffices. Due to this ignorance, since it would entail that the polytheists were more knowledgeable than them. So if one of them were to affirm the oneness of Allah in his lordship by saying Allah is my lord, creator, and sustainer, this would not suffice since the polytheists also affirm this. As Allah says, and if were, you were to ask them who created them, they would surely say Allah. Sir as Zuk Roof 87. Yundi says, And if you were to ask them who created the heavens and the earth and subtracted the sun and the moon, they would surely say Allah. So the polytheists affirmed this. Second rule. They, disbelievers, said we did not invoke them to turn towards them except to seek nearness to Allah and their intercession. And the proofs for their seeking nearness to Allah is a saying, and those who take protectors besides him say we only worship them that they may bring us closer to Allah verily Allah will judge between Where's them the don't get crumbs on the floor I know, she's right the there which they differ in verily Allah does not guide he who is a liar and a disbeliever so that's
that's the intercession using partners to get closer to Allah. That's like saying in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. They think that makes them get closer to God, but really it makes them get further because they're trying to give a partner to Allah. And where's the third rule? Uh, prophet was sent to a people that differed from one another in worship among them. You better not get eating crumbs on my bed. Or just go back out to the table. Among them were those who worshipped angels, and among them were those who worshipped prophets and righteous people. Among them were those who worshipped trees and stones, and among them were those who worshipped the sun and the moon. However, the messenger of law fought against all of them, did not differentiate between any of them. Fight against them until there is no more fitna, i.e. shirk, and the religion is purely for a law. Do not prostrate to the sun and the moon, but rather prostrate to a law who created them. And the fourth rule, or the fourth rule, Stop. Fourth rule, the polytheists in our era are more severe in their committing of shirk than the early polytheists during the prophet's time. This was since the early polytheists used to ascribe partners to Allah at times and of ease and worship and worship him sincerely during times of hardship. However, the polytheists in our era constantly commit shirk in times of ease and as well as times of hardship. The proof is for Allah's statement and they embark on a ship, they invoke Allah making their faith purely for him alone. But when he brings them safe to land, behold, they give a share of their worship to others. So the polytheists then, they used to drop the shirk when they were having a hard time. Mm -hmm. And they would worship only Allah, but then once things got easy again, they went back to worshiping other things. But nowadays, people just worship other things all the time because they think it's going to make things better. Right, Kitty? Kitty? Kitty okay, go night night. Kitty go night night. Oh, Kitty tired. Kitty tired.